Hey everyone, thanks a lot for joining in. My name is Haripriya Bandapuri and today my colleagues and I are here to talk about our topic for uh, presentation, in interactive data engineering workloads using Levy sessions on a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, before we get started, a quick few words about the speakers for today. Uh, joining me is Anmal Chaturvedi. He is a director of engineering at Informatica. Uh, he has about 15 years of experience in the field of enterprise data management. Uh, also joining me is Praneet Sharma. He is a principal software engineer with Informatica and has about seven plus years of experience in the industry. Uh, and I am Hari Priya Bendapuri, a senior software engineer at Informatica and have about three plus years of experience in the field of uh, data enterprise data management. So a quick uh, gist of uh, the items that we are going to cover as a part of the presentation. Uh, so we're going to start with Apache Livy. Uh, we'll go over the quick architecture uh, and some of the uh, job kinds that uh, Apache Livy supports. We'll then jump, in, jump into Informatica's Cloud Data Integration Elastic product. Uh, we'll go over uh, the architecture, some of the use cases that we cater to. Uh, and uh, next we'll look into uh, how and how, why uh, CDI Elastic had to integrate with Livy. Uh, and we'll close with uh, some performance uh, analysis and some of the contributions we did uh, in, in the process of uh, integrating with Livy. Uh, so what is Apache Livy? Uh, so as the name suggests, of course, it is an open source software under the Apache Foundation. Uh, it enables uh, interactions with uh, any kind of a Spark cluster. It could be Yarn, Kubernetes, et cetera, over a REST interface. Uh, it supports uh, different kinds of uh, executions. So we have batch as well as interactive. Uh, batch job uh, can be thought of as analo analogous to uh, a Spark submit, uh, whereas an interactive job is something like interacting with these Spark uh, shell, wherein we given the code as uh, uh, we can interact with a long running uh, Spark cluster. So uh, some of the uh, uh, not notable features of Apache Levy is it supports management of multiple long running Spark contexts. Uh, these contexts can be shared between different jobs and different clients. Uh, the job submitted to the context could be either a pre-compiled jar or a code snippet. Uh, uh, it, it, uh, it supports uh, synchronous and asynchronous ret retrieval of job results. Uh, and it also, in any particular uh, session, a running session can support different code, uh, which, are, which includes Spark, SQL, Spark R, or PySpark. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, right? So if we have, uh, so just look at the uh, job uh, execution and, and the session creation, right? So if, if, let's say, for example, we're running the cluster on a Kubernetes uh, mode of execution, uh, the, the, the Livy server gets deployed as a service, uh, and then the user interacts with uh, the server itself over REST interfaces or, or programmatic APIs to create sessions. A session here is nothing but a driver and a bunch of uh, executor resources. Uh, and the same session can be shared between users through a client object. Uh, uh, each individual user could request for uh, multiple new uh, sessions over time. Uh, so the different job kinds, uh, as I mentioned earlier, right? So we, under interactive jobs, we have uh, multiple job kinds that are supported. So the first type is a, a job or, or uh, basically wherein we have the access to the job context and we have a, a logic implemented within the programmatic API. Uh, this uh, particular job kind gets needs to be get compiled on the cluster, and then it uh, gets submitted to the Libby server itself, wherein uh, we have uh, the job running on a particular uh, Libby session. The next kind is a, is a statement, wherein this is uh, this is basically the, uh, the the code for for execution is passed in as a string, uh, and it, it goes uh, for execution through the statements API uh, to, to the uh, Levy server, and it can be executed on the server uh, uh, through, through the statements API and, and monitored. Uh, so, that, so now we'll jump into uh, the CDI Elastic product of Informatica. Uh, so to start off with, uh, Cloud Data Integration Elastic is nothing but a cloud native data integration and data enrichment solution. So we offer uh, a drag, drag and drop UI to the cu uh, customer where they can design the data flow, flow pipelines. Uh, we offer multiple modes of execution, including advanced serverless. 
uh, we support native hierarchical uh, data. Uh, and the cluster itself is uh, running a Spark on Kubernetes, and it can support the cluster instances across different cloud uh, providers, such as AWS, Azure, GCP. Uh, in addition, we've also added support for a local mode of execution where your uh, cluster is running on the uh, client itself. Uh, it also supports uh, automatic tuning and auto scaling. Uh, and finally, uh, we do support execution and monitoring of uh, scheduled and real-time job, jobs uh, on, on the product. So uh, on a very rough uh, level, we can kind of uh, 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 bucket the jobs that are run on the product into two, two, two kinds. We have the bot batch as well as the interactive jobs. Uh, and uh, this is how they kind of differ in the requirements based on these different comparison points. So if you look at the data size, a bad job usually caters to some gigabytes or terabytes of data, uh, whereas an interactive job uh, use case is, is, is usually on a, on a smaller uh, data set, which is about 100 MB or, or less than 10,000 rows. Uh, the requirement for the results is usually in a bad job, we require them to be written into some kind of a cloud storage like S3, uh, Google uh, storage, et cetera. Whereas an interactive uh, job use case, we require the results to be stored in memory and reused for consecutive uh, uh, operations. The dispatch time for a bad job, it's not very critical. It can take a few, few uh, seconds uh, longer. Whereas for interactive jobs, we require uh, more of a sub-second dispatch. Uh, again, the runtime, uh, considering that a bad job uh, it deals with much higher loads of data uh, could, could uh, vary anything between a few minutes to a few hours. Whereas interactive jobs are more real time. Uh, so they need to run and re uh, re retrieve or, or finish within a few seconds. Uh, the runtime SLA uh, or the, the guaranteed uh, uh, execution of the job is uh, mandatory for a bad job. We cannot uh, have uh, failures. We need to have resiliency. We need to have a repair, etc. Whereas for interactive, uh, it is okay. We, we prefer more of a fail fast uh, mode of execution. Uh, again, caching of data is optional for batch jobs, whereas for interactive jobs, it's preferred because again, it helps with a better uh, runtime. So this is how any batch job kind of uh, goes, uh, the steps that it goes through. So let's say the user designed the mapping on the UI uh, and once they hit the run button, uh, uh, behind the scenes, we the product itself uh, takes in the UI mapping and then converts it into some kind of a Spark execution uh, plan. Uh, and this uh, eventually, the Scala code that's get generated gets compiled on the cluster and it's submitted for execution on a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, this cluster, uh, as we mentioned earlier, can scale up, scale down, depending on the job size and the requirement. Uh, and once the execution is done, the user can monitor the, uh, the, the, the job on the monitoring UI. Uh, and once the execution is done, the, the results get returned, uh, written into the target location that the user has selected. Uh, the interactive job use cases, as uh, we've mentioned earlier, require more of a uh, real-time output of the data. So for example, uh, one of the use cases is data preview, which is some kind of a, a design time uh, debugging uh, use case for the user. Uh, so for example, they've designed a mapping and they want to see how their data looks at the joiner transformation. So they can request for a data preview and on the behind, we, we run the mapping and then we get the output and present it back to the user on the UI. So they can see how their data looks at uh, somewhere uh, mid uh, mapping. Uh, another use case is uh, data preparation. So here the user is kind of uh, working on some kind of a workbook uh, wherein uh, we show only a subset of the data called uh, like a page of the data and they are working with some operations on the workbook itself, right? So for example here they have their first name, last name and they want to create a new column called full name which is uh, nothing but a concatenation of two of the columns. Uh, and then later they might want to do subsequent operations on the full name uh, uh, field. Uh, so basically we require the data to be stored in memory uh, so that 
the subsequent operations can retrieve this data with, uh, with minimum uh, latency. Uh, so based on the, the interactive job use cases, these are some of the critical uh, requirements uh, that came in. So A, the, uh, as I mentioned, most of, most of these use cases are either we have a user waiting for uh, the, the, the results or we, have, we, we need them for subsequent operations. So uh, one critical requirement is the dispatch and runtime of the jobs to, should be very minimal. Uh, also, for uh, keeping things uh, uh, similar, we need the execution plan to be identical for interactive as well as batch modes. Uh, this will help the user uh, later on for debugging and, and to, to, to understand the, the, the flow uh, itself. Uh, and some of the use cases, as we mentioned earlier, require the intermediary results uh, for uh, to, to be reused for subsequent operations. So we needed some way to access in-memory objects to store these and access them again for a later use case. So uh, now that we've gone through some of the use cases, I'll pass on to Pranit, who will be talking about uh, how we leverage Levy to, to cater to these uh, use cases. Uh, thank you, Haripriya. Now that we have seen the interactive job use cases and the requirements in CDIE product, let us see how CDIE integrates with Apache Levy to support those interactive job use cases. I will begin with the interactive job architecture that we have set up in CDIE. On the left-hand side, you can see CDIE services, which are backed by Informatica's intelligent data management cloud and Informatica's AI-powered engine called Clear. And any data engineering workload-related interactions that the user performs on our product UI, all those requests reach CDIE services. And then CDIE passes on the request to another installation, which we call as an agent. Consider agent to be a proxy server that helps CDIE interacts with Kubernetes clusters. Now in CDIE, there are two modes. One wherein one is the advanced serverless mode, wherein this agent is fully managed by Informatica in its own VPC. And we have a normal mode wherein this agent is installed and managed by customer. And once the, the interactive job request reaches CDIE, since CDIE works with an ephemeral Kubernetes cluster, it, it will have to spin up the Kubernetes cluster first. And that is what it does with the help of agent. It spins up a Kubernetes cluster. Now this Kubernetes cluster can again be started in, in multiple modes. The one mode that I'm showing on the screen is the master only mode, wherein the Kubernetes cluster only starts up with a master node. And only when new job requests are submitted onto this cluster, will the, the node scale up kick in and it will add appropriately more number of worker nodes. Uh, since now that we have the Kubernetes cluster up and ready, the next step is to deploy uh, the Levy server. And uh, the, 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 the Levy server is deployed by CDIE in the form of a node port service on one of the worker nodes in, in the Kubernetes cluster. And the next step is to create a Levy session with an idle timeout of 15 minutes. And the characteristic of this Levy session is it will be shared for any subsequent interactive jobs that are being performed by the the user in our CDIE product. And once this Levy session is created in the Kubernetes cluster, you'll see that for that Levy session, a, a driver pod and one or more Spark executor pods are, are, have been deployed on one or more worker nodes of this Kubernetes cluster. And now that we have a shared Levy session running on the cluster, CDIE can now submit the interactive job that the user wanted to run. It can be either data visualization or data preparation job. And it would just do that using the submit statement API of Levy server. And what would happen is the Levy server would schedule uh, a number of Spark tasks on an already running Spark executors of that Levy session based on uh, the source partition count and many other factors. In addition to that, CDIE also registers a future-based listener so that it can asynchronously monitor the st status of statement execution. And once the statement execution completes, the results are retrieved by CDIE and they are converted to an appropriate form and published uh, to the UI for, for the user to visualize. So this is the interactive job architecture in CDIE at a high level. Let us highlight some of the, the, the salient points of its integration with Apache Levy. Uh, as we mentioned in CDIE, one of the requirements is we want to use the same execution plan for both batch mode and interactive jobs. And, and for the same reason, in, with our integration with Levy, CDIE 
submits an interactive Spark execution plan on a shared Levy session that is running on a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and to manage Levy sessions on the Kubernetes cluster, we need a Levy server, which CDIE deploys as a node port service. The one benefit of deploying Levy server as a node port service is that it can be accessed uh, using any of the worker node IPs that are part of the cluster. CDIE specifically uses the Kubernetes API server URL to, uh, for its interactions with the Levy server. Uh, and then once the statement execution starts, it is asynchronously monitored by CDIE using a completable future-based listener that it has registered using the job handle. And specifically for data preparation use cases, wherein there are multi, there are subsequent, there, there is a pipeline of Spark operations that are being run on the cluster, wherein a particular Spark operation depends on the outputs of the previous Spark operation. We need access to in-memory objects wherein these intermediate results can be stored. So for that CDIE uses Levy's shared object to speed up the overall a pipeline of Spark queries that are running on Levy. Uh, and now that we have seen how CDIE integrates with Apache Levy to support interactive jobs, let us see. Uh, let us look at some of the changes that we have to do in the backend services of CDIE to support execution of interactive jobs. So CDIE historically has mainly supported batch jobs, wherein the, the preference or priority was given to failure resiliency, job recovery, job reparenting because we are the, the SLA for bad jobs was guaranteed. On the other hand, when we look at the interactive job requirements and compare it, compare them, compare the requirements with bad jobs, these things differ. For example, for interactive job, the, the performance matters more. Uh, and it is okay if the, the job fails and the user retries. And so keeping those, the, keeping those requirements of interactive job in mind, in CDIE, we have introduced a new mode called quick dispatch mode. And this mode automatically kicks in when uh, a user performs either a data visualization or data preparation task in the CDIE product UI. And the, the design principle behind quick dispatch mode is that we want to fail fast and we are okay with user retries compared to uh, supporting job recovery and job reparenting. And the way we have supported quick dispatch mode to achieve near real-time dispatch of Spark job is through some following ways. One is we have uh, minimized all the cloud storage interactions as much as possible, which includes uh, CDIE used to use cloud storage for persisting job metadata for recovery and reparenting purposes that has been disabled in quick dispatch mode. Similarly, we have disabled event logs monitoring for interactive jobs. And our recommendation to the, the users that are using Levy sessions is to update or upload their jo jobs, job and jar dependencies during session creation and not during job dispatch. And similarly, we have also reduced the cloud storage remote calls to a bare minimum. Uh, in batch in, in batch job execution at various stages of execution, we used to repeatedly reach out to the Kubernetes cluster that could very well reside in, in a totally separate geo of the customer VPC for various things like knowing the, the cluster health check. And that used to easily add up, uh, the, the it used to increase the dispatch time of the batch jobs. But when it comes to interactive jobs, wherein we want to uh, keep the dispatch time to, to be very minimal. We have gotten rid of all those cloud remote call interactions, which means we only when absolutely required, we reach out to the, 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 the cluster, the Kubernetes cluster for checking either the cluster health or checking the Libby session state. And in addition to that, in case of network outages or service timeouts, rather than retrying uh, the job, on the cluster, we simply fail the job and we expect the user to retry that interactive job. And with the, with our integration with Apache Levy and with the introduction of quick dispatch mode, we saw uh, really good performance gains in terms of dispatch times and run times when you compare them with the Spark Bash numbers. So we just wanted to highlight them here. So the, I'll firstly cover the dispatch time. So here I'm highlighting the dispatch time of an interactive job that is running on a Levy session versus it being run in, in Spark Batch mode. And you could see that when it, the, the CDIE uh, interactive job was run in Spark Batch mode, it took roughly seven seconds. On the other hand, the same job that was scheduled on a Levy session, uh, its dispatch time only took 300 milliseconds. So over here, we saw an improvement of 20 times in terms of dispatch time. And there were many reasons at play here, but one of the main factors was the introduction of quick dispatch mode in the CDIE backend services. Similarly, when it comes to interactive jobs, 
the the end to end runtime is also a very important parameter because the since these are data visualization use cases the user expects the the visualization output in their ui in a few in a few seconds so now uh, here what we are showcasing for the end to end runtime is a series of interactive job operations that we performed using individual spark batch mo using individual spark batch jobs versus the pipeline of those jobs on a single shared levy session and what would what we could see was that when those pipeline of operations were run in spark batch mode they took more than 3 minutes but when the same pipeline was run on a single shared levy session them together took less than a minute and we could see an improvement of uh, three times in terms of end to end runtime and there were multiple reasons why we saw uh, an improvement of up to three times one of them is the, the dispatch time that uh, we talked about uh, the, the the improvement in dispatch time due to quick dispatch mode another reason is that when when we talk about jobs running on levy session uh, the levy session already has its own driver pod and executor pods scheduled on the kubernetes cluster but when it comes to spark batch mode with every spark job that is submitted on the kubernetes cluster every job requires its own driver pods and executor pods to be scheduled on the cluster and they easily add up a significant time to the end to end runtime and similarly there were mul multiple other factors that increase the overall runtime uh, when running interactive job in spark batch mode okay but we did not uh, but we we did face some challenges when integrating uh, cdie product with apache levy and we had to make changes to the underlying apache levy uh, uh, installation or third party libraries to perform effective integration and support our interactive job use cases so in in the next few slides i'm just going to cover some of the gaps that we encountered in uh, apache levy and how we overcame them so i'll start with some of the gaps in apache levy that we saw and that impacted our integration with cdie cdie product one 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 of them was when we started using the client sdk uh, exposed by levy to interact with levy server and create levy sessions we soon figured out that there was no api to submit statements we only had an api to submit jobs and like one of our requirements in terms of interactive job was that we wanted to use the same execution plan for both bad jobs and interactive jobs and that is where it really mattered i mean it really mattered for us to have an api to submit the statements and not just submit the jobs on a levy session another gap that we saw was that we witnessed was that for our interactive jobs we needed some classes to be loaded from the interpreter class path but what we saw was that when these job dependencies get added on an already running levy session these jars only get added to the application class path and not the interpreter class path similarly uh, when the add jar or add file utility is called on a duplicate resource then for levy session it turns out to be fatal whereas in our batch job wherein we were using plain spark context these things used to be treated as warnings and finally uh, the 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 levy client object that we were using to interact with levy session it did not have a way to give us back the levy session id and thus it became challenging for cdie to either rebuild levy client or perform other operations using levy session id like resources cleanup or uh, any future job management now that we have seen that the gaps that we witnessed in apache levy let us see how how we modified apache levy to overcome these gaps and make the integration successful i'll first of all present the the programmatic statement api support that we added in apache levy so essentially what we have done is at the interface level in levy client we have introduced a new api called submit statement which takes in the statement code snippet and it also takes the statement kind which can be of type spark sql spark r and py spark and let us quickly see with this api how the interactions between a client and levy server look so let's say client has a spark py program that it needs to submit in the form of a statement onto a onto a levy server and retrieve the py py value as a result in that case now it can use levy client's submit statement api to submit that statement onto the levy server uh, and then this new api will return it back the job handle similar to how it returns the job handle for submit job api and then client can use this job handle to register its listener and once levy sir and and once that happens what happens is in in levy server we have we have added a new handler for statements which we call as a statement handle impulse 
which is which is capable of performing operations on statement including starting the statement execution so now the the that statement handle impl kicks in in the livy server it starts the statement execution on the livy server by executing jobs on the uh, appropriate configured cluster and once the the statement result in is computed and the statement execution completes an appropriate api on the listener is called here we have assumed that the statement execution was successful so livy server calls the on job succeeded api you now on the registered listener and through there the the control reaches back to the client and the client can retrieve the 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 result which is the value of pi over here now if i just double click the statement handle impl that we have contributed to within the livy server component then this is what the structure of statement handle impl looks like it it essentially is meant to handle all the operations for a statement that is being submitted to livy server which means starting the statement execution cancelling the statement retrieving the the result of a statement with or without the timeout then there are aps to know whether the statement execution was done or whether it was cancelled and then there is an internal class called statement status which provides more status details of statement execution in addition to the the statement api uh, we also made uh, other contributions to the gaps that we highlighted and let me quickly summarize them so for the issue wherein we were not able to invoke add jar or add file api on a duplicate resource now instead of that instead of throwing a fatal error we have converted that them into uh, converting we have converted that into a warning this is to match the behavior of the spar context add jar api and when the add jar is now called for job dependencies during uh, on an already running livy session in that case the jar dependencies are also added to the interpreter class path in addition to application class path and now this behavior is also made consistent with how the jars are added to both these class paths during session creation and finally on the client sdk there is an api to retrieve the livy session id which then can be used for many other purposes related to livy session one of them being to reconnect to a livy session using a rebuilt livy client and for all these uh, open source contributions to apache livy we have uh provided the livy jiras and the pr links uh, on this uh, on this slide uh, please do take a look and provide us valuable feedback and this is all we had for the apache con presentation uh thank you again so much for uh, giving us the opportunity to present uh, our cdi integration with apache livy at apache con thank you